Hi, this is Cheryl Peterson with Healing Science Today. I'm here with my husband, Doug, and we're going to read a contemporary Christian science Bible lesson sermon from the English Standard Version of the Bible, copyrighted by Crossway Bibles, and from 21st Century Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures, a modern version of Mary Baker Eddy's Science and Health. Subject is Christmas. Golden text is from Psalms. For you, O Lord, are my hope, my trust, O Lord, from my youth. Upon you I have leaned from before my birth. You are he who took me from my mother's womb. My praise is continually of you. Genesis. Once, when Jacob was cooking stew, Esau came in from the field, and he was exhausted. And Esau said to Jacob, let me eat some of that red stew, for I'm exhausted. Therefore, his name was Edom. Jacob said, sell me your birthright now. Esau said, oh, I'm about to die. Of what use is a birthright to me? Jacob said, swear to me now. So he swore to him and sold his birthright to Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and lentil stew, and he ate and drank and rose and went his way. Thus... Esau despised his birthright. From 21st Century Science and Health, copyrighted by Cheryl Peterson. Human experience in mortal life starts from a cell and corresponds with that of Job. When he says, man, born of woman, is a few days and full of trouble. Mortals must break out of this mental cycle of thinking that material life is all in all. They must think outside of the box with divine science and look to the infinite cosmos. Be aware though that thought which escapes the box and has not yet been instructed by the science of truth and love may become wild with freedom and so be self-contradictory there is only one spiritual existence, the life of which physical senses can't grasp or manipulate. How does the heavenly conviction of spiritual existence come about? How is a conviction so antagonistic to the testimony of the physical senses ex is experienced? According to Paul, it is the gift of God's grace given me through the working of his power. Neil Donald Walsh, author of The New Revelations, A Conversation with God, wrote, Divine inspiration is the birthright of every human being. Luke, and Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. And at the end of eight days, when he was circumcised, he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Born of woman, Jesus appeared in the flesh. If his origin hadn't been a typical human birth, Jesus' life wouldn't have been meaningful to humans as the way. But, as it was, his circumstance enabled him to be the mediator or way-shower between God and us. Human belief shifting between feelings of satisfaction and dissatisfaction, hope and fear, life and death, never breaks through the limiting factors of the mortal or the unreal. Ah, but when the real is experienced, Joy is no longer fragile, and hope is no longer a con artist. 
Spiritual ideas like numbers and notes start from principle and admit no limiting factors. Spiritual ideas lead up to their divine origin, God, and to the spiritual sense of being. Spiritual perception, excelling over multiple perceptions, mutable, excuse me, mutable perceptions, involves intuition, hope, faith, understanding, spiritual experience, reality. The nature of spirituality is peaceful and blessed. To enter the realm of spirit, our anchor of hope must be thrown past the veil of matter into the Shekinah that Jesus showed us. This advanced beyond superficial thinking comes through the joys and triumphs of the righteous as well as through their sorrows and afflictions. Matthew. At that time Herod the Tetrarch heard about the fame of Jesus and he said to his servants, this is John the Baptist. He has been raised from the dead. That is why these miraculous powers are at work in him. For Herod had seized John and bound him and put him in prison for the sake of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because John had been saying to him, It is not lawful for you to have her. And though he wanted to put him to death, he feared the people because they held him to be a prophet. But when Herod's birthday came, the daughter of Herodias danced before the company and pleased Herod so that he promised with an oath to give her whatever she might want. Prompted by her mother, she said, Give me the, hand, the head of John the Baptist here on a platter. And the king was sorry, but because of his oath and his guest, he commanded it to be given. He sent and had John beheaded in the prison, and his head was brought on a platter and given to the girl, and she brought it to her mother. And his disciples came and took the body and buried it, and they went and told Jesus. Let the stories of Jesus' birth in a manger and death on the cross deflate human arrogance and egotism. Death will not banish the virtual reality of mortal existence. False perceptions and superstitions persist when Humans limited mi limit mind. Mind is limitless. Mind never was limited. King Herod repeated the superstitious thinking and construed, John, the man I beheaded, has been raised from the dead. That a wicked king and corrupt husband should have no appreciation of divine science and the great work of the master was not a shocker. How could a sinner comprehend what the disciples did not fully understand? It's no wonder Herod's curiosity desired to see the new teacher. Don't keep records of the aging process. Chronological data is no part of the vast forever. Charts of births, stages, and deaths are so many conspiracies against manhood and womanhood. Measuring the limiting all and limiting all that is good and beautiful is an age-old habit. If not for that routine, we would enjoy our advanced years and still be vigorous, light-hearted, and full of promise. Governed by spiritual mind, we are always graceful and noble. Each succeeding year unfolds wisdom, beauty, and holiness. Life is eternal. We should find this out and begin the demonstration thereof. Life and goodness are spiritual. Let us then shape our views of existence into loveliness, renewal, consistency rather than into debility and loss. James, let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, and he himself tempts no one. 
but each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Then desire, when it has conceived, gives, gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brothers. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Earthly experience exposes the relativity of error indirectly leading to the infinite capacities of truth. Spiritual beings agree with the absolute and harmonious principle of being. Immortality does not sin, suffer, or die, and our spiritual experiences will multiply instead of diminish as God's kingdom comes on earth. Sickness is real, is true, that is, to the patient's frightened perception. Disorders and problems are more than imagination. They are solid convictions of fear or ignorance and therefore need to be dealt with through an accurate comprehension of the truth of being. If soul healing is abused by those who are wise in their own conceit, treatment becomes an irksome troublemaker. Instead of scientifically affecting a cure, a boaster in science starts petty crossfires over those who are disabled and sick. Humanity should not be knocked around with superficial and heartless remarks like, it's all in your head. Matter is not real. Be more spiritual. You really are perfect. The spiritual way leads to life instead of to death, and we realize our God-given dominion to overcome temporal limitations. Christianity and science can be viewed as one and the same and in demonstration. Otherwise, one or the other is false and useless. Christianity, as Jesus taught it, was neither a creed nor a system of sacred ceremonies, nor a special gift from a ritualistic Yahweh, but it was the demonstration of divine love overcoming error and healing the sick, not merely in the name of truth, but in demonstration of truth, as in the ongoing cycles of divine light. Isaiah, listen to me, O house of Jacob, all the remnant of the house of Israel, who have been born by me from before your birth, carried from the womb, even to your old age I am he, and to gray hairs I will carry you. I have made, and I will bear, I will carry, and will save. A human origin designates the offsprings of physical sense, not of soul. Love restores my soul, spiritual sense. Love guides me in paths of righteousness, for his name's sake. Soul is never born and never dies. Our true identity is the likeness of spirit, ego. God has built a higher platform of human rights on divine claims. These claims are not made through human regulations or creeds, but in demonstration of peace on earth among men of good will. Human policies, scholastic theology, and inconsistent health care systems divide and scatter faith and spiritual understanding. Divine science comes to the rescue, and our birthright of soul allegiance to our Maker asserts itself. When a new spiritual idea is born to earth. The prophetic scripture of Isaiah 
is again fulfilled. For to us a child is born, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor. Merry Christmas.